Um, really excited about first day of practice. You know, we just came up uh, with our players here after we wrapped up. And uh, I told our guys I haven't been around a lot of bad first days. And I, I certainly still feel that way. Um, today was not a bad first day. There was great energy, enthusiasm, a lot of buy-in. Obviously, our first chance as coaches to see what our guys do with the, the ball in their hands. Um, saw some explosive plays out there on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, really emphasized at the end of the day that we want to do a great job of, of owning the ball, but also creating those support, uh, explosives. So attacking the ball on defense uh, and owning the ball there on the offensive side of the ball. Um, thought our guys played with a different speed and enthusiasm than we've seen so far, and, and obviously that's going to happen on day one. So really the challenge for us is to see what we're going to do this next day uh, and what we're going to do the day after that and the day after that. Um, but right now our focus is is growth season, you know, spring spring ball, and we're in a period of growth looking for opportunity to make tomorrow and the day after that better than today. So that being said, we can open it up for questions. All right, Coach, we'll start with James Carpia from the Oregonian. Dan, just a couple of things on personnel uh, on Jalen Smith. As he left the program, he's not on the roster. And with Boyle, is this just a, an enrollment timing thing? Will he be post-spring uh, post spring break or post-spring practice entirely? Really, really just focusing James right now on the guys that are here. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Coach, I wonder, I know it's day one and you have a lot of time to kind of get a better idea for what you have, but some attributes maybe that stand out for that are strengths for this team, you know, coming into spring and kind of, I guess, what are your, your goals in these first couple of days? Yeah, uh, you know, overwhelming attribute to me is just the fact that these guys like to compete. Uh, you know, there was a little chatter out there uh, between both sides of the ball, and you like to see that a little bit as a coach, but obviously we're on the same team. So uh, our guys play with great enthusiasm and good energy today. Um, but again, to me, it's not about what that looks like on day one. It's really what it looks like on day 15 as we start to shape. You know, you, you look to see how many mental errors occur out there. Do we have a good understanding of what we're trying to do? And there are certainly some things that we need to clean up. But overall, I would say it was a pretty clean um, day from an operations standpoint. Just some some details we want to continue to work on. Dylan Ruman King, Ducks Digest. Hey, Coach, Anthony Jones was the only true freshman on the roster. I'm just curious your first impressions of him, you know, getting acclimated with the team. You know, I think Anthony found out quick that it really doesn't matter how old you are anymore, right? Uh, and one thing I've said and I've kind of built uh, in my mantra the last couple of years is if you're good enough, you're old enough. And so Anthony's going out there to work. We don't we don't put freshman on your helmet. We don't put sophomore on your helmet, junior on your helmet. We put a, You got a jersey number and you got a helmet, so go to work. And uh, Anthony's done a good job of embracing that so far. We don't have unrealistic expectations. He certainly has uh, a lot of areas for growth, um, but we're also not, uh, you know, babying him along the way. He's coming along really well. He's working really hard, uh, and I think he has super high expectations for himself. So excited to see what he does. Zach Neal, Duxwire. Coach, I'm not sure how much you're willing to share or even able to share at this point, but I was wondering if you could offer an update on the health of Coach Don Johnson after his recent medical issue. Yeah, I, I wish there was some uh, new news right now, but there's not a lot of new news, you know, outside that we're, we, it's still very serious and we continue to send, you know, our thoughts and prayers for Don and his family and, uh, you know, trying to try to stay up to date as we can. But there's not a lot of new news to share right now other than we got to continue to pray uh, for him and his crew. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Dan, just what are your overarching themes you want to get accomplished in, in spring ball, the, the pillars of, of this camp for you? Yeah, ultimately, you want to push competition, and we have to ID quickly some areas of weakness and some strengths, right, to our team. You know, I think we have uh, good personnel, but as your personnel changes, you have to adapt to your personnel. So quickly, we want to figure out who are the guys that can go make plays on the ball, you know, defensively, who are the guys that can play in space, who can rush the passer, um, who can protect, uh, who can, can who can own the ball on offense. Um, so trying to just identify some of those traits uh, as a staff. Uh, and then as players, we're trying to complete, you know, kind of create that competitive toughness uh, and that brotherhood that's required to play at a high level of football in this league. Gabriel Marvin, Rivals. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know it's just the first day of practice, but how do you see a lot of these uh, transfers fitting in with their position groups? Yeah, it's almost similar to what I just said about freshmen, sophomores, you know, junior, seniors. Like, we, th there isn't anything on their helmet that says transfer, right? They, they come out there, they're wearing the same gear as everybody else, and they're going to work. We've been fortunate enough to have some opportunities to meet uh, on football the last few weeks, whether it be walkthroughs or just in the meeting room. Uh, and those guys, are that's giving them a, a leg up and an opportunity to advance. 
Um, they've done a good job of adapting and hopping right in, but we don't separate those guys. It's not, a, it's not a different group. They just, we throw them in and, and uh, get them in there to the work. Jared, Denny scooped up. Hey coach, uh, Justin Flo looked obviously pretty happy to be out there today. I know it's been a long recovery road for him. Um, I'm just wondering kind of how close he is to full go, if there's any timetable on that. Yeah, continue to assess it. You know, I hate to put a timeline on anything just because I, I you know, if it's up to me, we had him out there yesterday, but we got to do it the right mode and temperament. And uh, like you said, Justin's ready to be out there, ready to roll. And we're going to continue to progress him and work him in as he can. Um, and as he continues to take steps forward, we'll keep pushing the envelope there, but obviously keeping his health and safety at the front of our, uh, of our approach. Jared Mack, 247. Yeah, going off the injury question from from Jared, um, just your overall expectations on if those guys will, you know, be full participants at some point during the spring. Yeah, my hope is that everybody that's in our program can be able to help. I mean, I, I think again, each guy's situation is different, so continue to assess it as it goes. James, in terms of how you're going to go about the defensive install, you and Tosh, Dan, um, and I'm sure it's already kind of begun in, in meetings, but leading up to today. How do you go about it systematically more in terms of like Muschamp years ago would install the whole thing and then in games weeks would kind of do a refresh on what the plan was. And I think he's probably tweaked that since because it didn't work out so well in that method. Um, do you take it more piecemeal? Uh, are you getting to are you getting to everything here in the spring? Is simulated pressure going to be like a week three of spring thing or is that a fall camp thing? Yeah, we're, we're going to build it, you know, from the ground up. But luckily, I think something that's changed over the last few years is you get the opportunity to do football uh, even before spring ball, you know, whereas before there were some limitations with that. So we've had walkthroughs. We've had some football um, operation. And, and I think that's going to help us be able to push the envelope. I've kind of always been a guy that feels like you can, you know, throw it all at them and then we'll see what sticks. Um, but that being said, we're certainly going to be a little bit more limited in our menu than we've been in the past. Um, but today wasn't a super limitation today. You want to go out there and you want to see your guys play fast. So if we're making a bunch of schematic errors on offense or defense, then we're doing too much. And that wasn't the case. You know, we, we peeled it back a little bit and did a little less, um, but we're going to carry, you know, all elements to our defense and all elements to our, our offense that we think can make us competitive on game day. Eric. There's quite a few guys moving around offense and defense. I won't ask you to address all of them. I'm, I'm curious on why seven maybe is a good fit receiver. Like Tri Quez was working at safety. Um, Adrian Jackson's Jabril moving back to inside. Uh, there are probably more to note, but just some of those decisions and, and kind of how Jackson Powers Johnson going defense, Jonah Miller going defense. How fluid are those situations? Yeah, every situation is fluid. Uh, I think when you see a guy working at one position, sometimes you can be, um, you know, a little bit, we're not going to throw our, our, our head in here and say that there's only a limitation on what one guy can do. So every guy in our program is going to learn multiple positions. Um, they're not going to want to learn one or the other. We want to have position versatility and be able to play our best 11 in a multiple uh, two to ways. Um, obviously, every decision we make right now is going to be about what's the best interest of Oregon football. Right. And then outside of that, where's the best opportunity for these players to make an impact on this team? And we want every guy to be able to make an impact that can make an impact. So um, some guys could certainly play other positions, um, but we're starting them right now where we think they can impact Oregon football the best. Tyson Alger, I-5 corridor. I'm, I'm curious, last year when you guys had a team that you knew was going to be peaking for that year, how, how you guys went about planning your spring at Georgia versus what it's like for you guys this year, where it's it's not saying that you guys aren't peaking or, or going for it this year, but when you're in a little bit more transition, like like what, what are you guys trying to get out versus of like when la like, like like a team like last year? Yeah, honestly, you know, we weren't, we weren't, we, you put the goal in front of you and that's that day, right? Our goal today was to be the best version of the Oregon Duck football team that we can be. Um, last year when I was at Georgia, we didn't start sitting here talking about national championships at, on that day either. You know, you focus on how can you get better in spring? And again, like I said, our goal here is this is growth season, right? What can we get better at right now? Let's have a grower's mindset. All right, let's be learners and growers. Let's go out here and figure out what can I do better. I think every guy's natural reaction as a player and a coach is to come off the field and they want to pull up the clip of film where they caught a ball or they made a tackle or they punched out a pass. Um, I challenged our players to come off the field and go find something you did wrong that you can make sure you don't do wrong tomorrow or the next day. All right, and that was really our focus. Um, you know, a grower's mindset is going to find stuff that we can get better at, and that's that's what our guys have focused on. And that was no different than my approach last year. Dylan? Now that you get to 
jump in and you're in spring practice for the first time as a head coach. I'm just wondering how you're feeling of, you know, handling this as a head coach. I know you've said before that you coached third grade basketball, but you know, now you're a power five head coach. So just how are you feeling right now? Yeah, I'm excited and extremely blessed. I think everybody that's part of our uh, organization feels excited and blessed to be a part of it. You know, uh, we're not going to be a team or a coaching staff that has the poor me's. We realize how fortunate we are um, to get to wear the O. Um, I'm certainly encouraged and thrilled to be a guy that gets to wear the O and um, excited to see where this team goes. We have time for a couple more, so we'll go James and then Matt to end it. Dan, I was at the combine last week. Was speaking with several of your former guys and and Kenny's former guys and Joe's former guys and you name it. Um, but one of your former guys that stood out was actually Jermaine Johnson, um, and, and and shared a little bit about on the recruiting side of things how you stayed in touch with him and how you first came across him. And then you kept in touch, therefore, at Georgia. I'm curious, since there's obviously a big recruiting weekend coming up and throughout the spring and leading up to the spring game and those sorts of things, are there similar circumstances like that where you kept in touch with people from your previous stop who maybe weren't a fit there because of geography, it was too far from home or what have you, but the established relationship is now paying dividends here in this opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of – I think you lean on relationships wherever you're at. Um, obviously, we're not spending any time talking about guys or talking to guys that aren't in the portal, but I always want to be there for guys that have played for me and lean uh, lean on me um, in the past, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my former players. So uh, relationships, hopefully, is what makes us different at the end of the day, and we're going to be able to lean on those relationships to do well in recruiting. That's something we'll always utilize. Last one, Matt. For players and for fans, there's always excitement um, for first practice. What was last night like for you? This is your first opportunity to, to run a program. And I guess just what, what's that like right now? How is that going? My favorite holiday is Christmas. So last night was like Christmas Eve. You know what I mean? Like going to bed and you want to like couldn't fall asleep. You wake up early. Um, just excited to see you guys get out there and move. I mean, make no mistake, my favorite part of coaching is on the grass. My favorite part of coaching is coaching ball. When I was a player, I was the weird guy that really loved practice. Like, I love the games, but I love practice too. So an opportunity to go out there and get better, um, you know, that's, you know, that was pretty exciting, you know, for me. And uh, I think it was really exciting for our guys. Like I said, I thought they brought good energy today and we're ready to roll. And that's all the time we got. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you, guys. All right. See you guys.